Why Not Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer. Magic City Hoagies, locally owned sandwich shop located in Southwest Minot. Taco John's, offering fresh tacos, burritos, nachos, and breakfast. Thrive in Financial, connecting faith and finances. El Azteca, authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. PMQ Entertainment, performing at weddings, proms, and dances. The Pursuit, creating a place in Minot where everyone is welcome. Mouse River Players, community theater since 1971. H-Bar B Construction, for all your oil field needs. Bears Cat Donuts. Located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. Welcome to another episode of MSU Inside Out, this time with our updated set. My name is Shalom Bear. And I'm Monica Rivera. Today on the show, we will have three interviews, one with a representative from the music department, actually two, I'm sorry, another with a track and field athlete and all of his successes, and lastly, one with a graphic designer who's been helping the Wellness Center as an intern. And there's also, there's a lot of clubs on campus lately, but one I haven't really heard of, and neither have you. It's a, a mental health club. Yeah, MSU Active Minds Club, which I hadn't heard about at all until Chad mentioned it before the show. So you have a little bit more information about that, right? Yeah, they've been active on campus, and so it's time to get the word out. The MSU Active Minds Club is featuring a speaking out event for students today at 6.30 on the second floor of Swain Hall. The gathering will provide an opportunity for students to check out mental health resources on campus and students will also be able to share their story. It's open to the public and MSU students and faculty are encouraged to attend. More information can be found on the MSU website. Alishire Theater will be hosting a free movie night tonight at seven. The featured movie will be their Neither Wolf Nor Dog and is based on a novel written by Ken Nairburn. It's about how a Lakota elder hires a white writer to write a book about his people. The event is open to the public and more information about the event can be found on the MSU calendar of events. If you are bored from schoolwork and studying, MSU Life has you covered. There will be a free game show night called The Feud Thanksgiving Edition. It's tonight from 7 to 10 at the Beaver Dam. The game night will mimic the classic game show Family Feud and will have buzzer face-off questions. The event is free to students with a current MSU ID. For more information, contact Aaron Hughes at 858-3987. The MSU track and field team is giving all MSU students an opportunity to join the team. The track and field program will be conducting open tryouts tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. In the, in the MSU Dome. The tryouts will only be for sprint, jump, and throwing events. All candidates must be current Minot State students and must have a current physical. Those interested must contact Coach Mark Delmonico at mark.delmonico at minotstateu.edu. MSU is offering a free preview day on Saturday from 10 to 3. Preview day is for current and potential MSU students who want to see what MSU has to offer for education opportunities. Future students can visit with faculty and the event will feature appealing speakers, a department fair and discovery sessions for everyone to get involved. Campus tours will also be given upon request. The event is open to the public and more information can be found on the MSU website. 
Join Christ Lutheran Church on Sunday from 5 to 7 for the 11th annual Chili Feed and auction. The fundraiser is to support and raise money for MSU students involved in Lutheran Campus Ministries who will be going on a mission trip to Costa Rica this spring. The event is at Christ Lutheran Church on 502 17th Street Northwest. There will be a variety of chili to sample and will also include a dessert contest. Some of the auction items include Minnesota Vikings tickets, a golf club set, and a steak dinner. The event is free to students with a current MSU ID and a free will offering will be taken. For more information, contact Deacon Anna Dykeman at 690-4034. So it looks like there's a lot of great prizes, especially those Minnesota Vikings tickets. I'm sure there's a lot of people that'd like to get their hands on those. Yeah. So, and it's going to a great cause. I would just go for the chili. Sure, hey. Chili is great, you can't go wrong. Even if you don't get anything, at least you got some chili out of Absolutely. the deal. Absolutely. Especially with, you know, things probably gonna get colder soon, although it has been a little bit warmer lately. It's mm -hmm. kind of weird, it's been in like, the 30s and stuff like that. So Michael has our forecast for us to let us know where the weather's gonna go. Thanks, Janelle. Yeah, we were kind of like in a very, very like cold kind of front from last week. It was very, very, you had to bundle up for here. But this week we're actually looking into a lot better weather. And as you can see, I'm just wearing a turtleneck and that's actually what I just kind of had today. Not really any jackets or sweaters, but looking at across the state of North Dakota currently, it is, 32 degrees in Grand Forks, 32 degrees in Fargo, and it is 33 degrees in Williston, 31 degrees in Dickinson, 35 degrees in State Capital Bismarck, and we are looking at 33 degrees in Minot. Relatively, it's been a lot more cooler across the state, and next up, we'll be talking about the seven-day forecast coming up for Minot. On Friday, we have a high of 34. It is supposed to be with a low of 31 degrees, and it is supposed to be cloudy all day. For Saturday, we are at a high of 39, again, better weather, with a low of 29 degrees, and it is supposed to be cloudy all day. On Sunday, we have a high of 43 with a low of 35, and it is supposed to be sunny with partly cloudy skies. On Monday, arguably, probably, I always say this sometimes, but it'll probably be like the best weather before it gets pretty worse, but you know, stay tuned. Um, it's supposed to be a high of 48 with a low of 29 degrees, and it is supposed to be sunny with partly cloudy skies. Tuesday, we're expecting some snow showers, so just be prepared, but not too bad because it's supposed to be a high of 38 degrees with a low of 25 degrees. And for Wednesday, we're looking at a high of 32 degrees with a low of 22 degrees, and once again, sunny with partly cloudy skies. Then for Thursday, we have a high of 33 degrees, and it's supposed to be sunny with partly cloudy skies. That's about it for the weather coming up. We're in for some good stuff, so what do you guys got next? Thanks, Michael. So the music department has been pretty busy this semester with various events on campus. They actually have an event coming up tomorrow that is off campus. With me is Dr. Emerson Eads and Micah Carter uh, here to talk with us about that. So I guess first off, the event is called MSU Singers Concert. So tell me a little bit about what that is all about. So I had uh, a, a member of the choir, Antonio Franco, who was from Puerto Rico, okay. um, who lived through Hurricane Maria, um, on his island, um, his desire was that we do a fundraiser concert for the victims of Hurricane Dorian from uh, the bah in the Bahamas. And uh, I was very moved by that because obviously he had gone through it. So um, the choir immediately knew that that was the thing to do since one of our members had gone yeah. through it and had the desire to do it. Um, so the name of the concert is actually When I Am Gone. Okay. And uh, it's a concert of a cappella uh, choral music from the MSU Singers, which is a smaller group than the choir. Mm -hmm. But it will also feature um, Charlie Young on saxophone. Um, it'll be some interesting Norwegian um, music that we uh, took back from our trip to Norway in the summer. Um, so there'll be some reminiscing and um, Anyway, we're looking forward to it. Nice, and then, Micah, are you part of MSU Singers? I am, I'm a tenor in okay. there, which is you know the higher part yeah. for the males, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy all the music we're seeing right now. Okay. And when did you get involved with the choir? Um, so I came into, I'm a freshman, I came okay. into um, 
school as I, I grew up in Minot and I grew up in the area and I took lessons from Dr. Reed's last year so it's a pretty easy transition from high school to the college choir. So yeah. Interesting so you actually kind of had a little bit of a taste of the I college did. side of things before I, you actually I sure did, did it up yes. there. Yeah. Nice, and this you'll be singing tomorrow night. I will as well. So, are you excited for that? Very excited. Okay. Yep, should be a great concert. Nice, and that's tomorrow night, correct? At the depot. So this isn't on campus, which is unusual. Why did you guys decide to do it off campus? Yeah. So I, I spent uh, the summer searching for the best venue possible to sing in because there are very few venues for that are that are friendly to the voice. Yeah. So you go into churches now, and they're usually carpeted, mm -hmm. uh, things that deaden the sound. You want things that are that make the voice really fly. And I walked into the the depot, mm -hmm. and uh, the the Ackermans now own it. Okay. Um, and they um, allowed us to to go in free of charge, oh, nice. uh, and do this benefit concert. And it, it's absolutely stunning sound. I mean, like mm -hmm. you just speak in there, yeah. <laughs> and the voice just carries. It's so. It's fantastic. Yes. And they recently renovated that building, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah, and and well the other reason for, for singing in there is it's such a it's such a quintessentially Minot venue being a train station mm -hmm. in the middle of town. The whole reason why Minot is here is because of trains. And yeah. and then it is the place we're gonna be singing. So I'm really excited the Minot State University singers are gonna have a chance to sing in that beautiful space. Awesome. So. And again, that is The Depot at 7.30 tomorrow night at 15 North Main. Uh, coming up next, we'll have an interview with the broadcasting department who is involved with athletics as well. Thank you to all of our underwriters. All American Trophies for all your screen printing and embroidery needs. Art Main offering custom frames, art supplies, and jewelry. Buffalo Wings and Rings, a sports restaurant experience located in South Minot. Badlands Bar and Grill, located on 31st Avenue in Minot. Trinity Health is a comprehensive healthcare system based in Minot, North Dakota. Fiance, with all your prom and bridal needs, located in downtown Minot. KCJB 910 AM, Minot's news and information station. Buffalo Wild Wings, wings, beer, sports. KIZZ FM Z94, playing today's hit music. Mix 99.9, .9, Minot's music mix. Happy Joe's Pizza and Ice Cream, serving the Midwest since 1972. SRT, offering a number of services including phone, TV, internet, and security. KRRZ, 1390 AM, Minot's Classic Hits. KZPR 105.3 FM, Minot's Rock Station. Jacobson Music, bringing music to the Northern Plains since 1980. Qdoba, easy, on time, full of flavor. Nice impressions, no job is too big or too small, located in downtown Minot. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we are joined by a very special guest, not only is he involved in the broadcasting department, but he's a three-sport athlete running cross-country, indoor, and outdoor track. Here is Devin Shumway. Not only that, he was also on the front page of the paper the other week. Devin, can you talk a little bit about what your involvement in with the, with the broadcasting department is? Yeah, so I'm a manager, a KMSU TV manager. Um, basically, my duties with that are overseeing the TV activities class, So, um, and I run the TV slides as well. Okay, so let's go to athletics for a little bit. Can you enlighten us all about the grind of doing three sports and basically working out 12 months a year? Yeah, so I've been on the cross country and track and field team 
um, for five years now at Minot State. And like you said, we basically don't ever have a break. Like, you know, football season has their time in the fall and then they're done until spring ball. But um, with cross country and track, you know, we have cross country in the fall and then we basically get 10 days to two weeks completely off of running. And then we go into indoor track, which is from beginning of January until about mid to end of February. And then after that, it's right into outdoor, which is from March until May. So um, yeah, it's a grind, like you said. Wow, that is extremely impressive. Um, can you talk a little bit about like, you know, being a college student at the same time, balancing all this with classes? Yeah, so it is um, a lot about time management. If you don't have time management, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a struggle. Um, it's, you know, you just kinda gotta accept it. I've gotten used to not really having a lot of free time, but um, like I said, I've been here for five years, so I kind of got it figured out. And when I was a freshman, it did take me a little bit of time to um, to adjust, but I think I got it kind of locked in now. So with this absolute wealth of experience, what are you planning on doing in the future? Ooh, good question. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna graduate in the fall, or sorry, next spring, and um, I'm not really sure where I'm gonna end up. We'll We'll see when the time comes, but I'm just gonna, um, take my time here at Minot State and yeah. Awesome. That's fantastic. There you have it, everybody. That was Devin Shumway. When we get back out of these underwriters, we're going to more news and a sports update. Welcome back. Uh, lately, we've been having a lot of renovations in the athletic department. We, the dome is actually new and red, yes. just like our, our set. set. I know, so much red. That's great. It's definitely something new. Chad has a little bit more about the dome to tell us about. Yeah, I think everybody's pretty jazzed that uh, the renovation is now complete. It's been months in the making, but the MSU Dome project is now complete. MSU commemorated the event last night. It included a ribbon cutting ceremony with the Minot Area Chamber of Commerce. The over $2 million re renovation was made possible by the City of Minot, First International Bank and Trust, Shields, First Western Bank and Trust, Ryan Family Dealerships, and many others. Money was also raised through the Buy a Seat program that has has over 300 donors. The renovation will help the facility maintain its status as one of the top venues in the upper Midwest. It will also ensure that the city of Minot stays in the rotation for regional and state tournaments. The upgrades include larger chairs, increased aisles, handrails, and a structural upgrade. This will allow for quicker setups and takedowns. Another added feature is the second floor concourse. MSU senior Maria Mikova is an overcomer and loves a challenge. She occupied her time over the summer conducting research in the Amgen Scholars Program held at the University of Tokyo. She secured one of 15 positions with the program that allows students from around the world to be part of cutting edge research. The Amgen program was founded in 2006 and is an international course. It is supported by the Amgen Foundation it is also advised by Harvard University. Since its inception, more than 4,000 students from many different universities have become Amgen's, Amgen scholars. Mikova moved to the top of the list and presented a poster and delivered an oral presentation at the event. Being originally from Ukraine, Mikova found out about Minot State through a college search and her desire to succeed and become a chemist has outlasted the North Dakota snow. 
Veterans Day may be over, but that doesn't mean that you have to stop showing your appreciation. If you are a current active duty military or a member or a veteran, thank you for your service from all the staff of MSU Inside Out. If you're looking for an opportunity to help veterans, give Andy Heitkamp a call at 852, excuse me, 858-4002. So I know I had an opportunity to be a part of a speaking event for Veterans Day. Uh, did you do anything uh, for Veterans Day? Any special events? Well, on the weekend, I PN announced the first time for the women's hockey team, mm -hmm. and they did a really big thing for the veterans and wore different jerseys. So I was able to thank, to thank them there. So I was mm -hmm. very appreciative for that. So thank thank you for all the veterans. I really appreciate you guys. Thanks, Chad. Mm -hmm. Um, as said on the show many times, Minot State has many opportunities to offer to students. I'm here with Isis Cabral, who is interning under the Wellness Center to, to provide posters for their events and is on the softball team as well. Thank you for being here, Isis. Um, what made you want to intern for the Wellness Center? Just with the field of study that I'm in, I knew that this would provide me with the best opportunity to kind of just hone in on my craft and really develop my skill for my senior year. What do you do specifically? I'm in charge of media posts as well as any posters, signage, pretty much anything that you see graphically done for the Wellness Center I create. What kind of posts do you make? Um, as of right now, the main posts that I have been kind of compiling is the intramurals schedules and posters for each event. So right now, out on our media accounts and even around campus, there's bulletins for I believe it is co-ed volleyball and co-ed bowling, which is going on right now. I've been hearing a lot about the bowling. People are very excited about that. Um, is there any other upcoming events that are being held? Um, as far as now, no. We're pretty much wrapping up this fall with just these last two events, and then we'll pick back up more with more intramurals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so switching gears into the softball side of things, how does it feel to be back on the field? It's amazing. It's definitely refreshing and just inspiring in a way to, to just work with everybody because last year I was able to see everybody grow and develop and this year to be back on the field, it's just a blessing in it all. And what's the change with the new coach? How do you feel about it? He is just such a knowledgeable individual and he brings this more family-oriented family culture to the team and program. and that has been a huge jump for everybody on the field. I and I know that you enjoy lifting and now we have Caleb as our trainer again. Did you have him your yes. freshman year? Yes, Caleb was my trainer freshman year as well. Have you seen a difference in the workout since then? Yes, everything with from Caleb my freshman year till now, he's just become so much more specific for each sport and I can see a huge difference between the lifts that I was doing my freshman year to now, which is almost five years later, and it's incredible. I'm definitely the strongest I've ever been in my career being here. With being a senior, what advice would you give to our underclassmen? I would say to just take advantage of every opportunity that MSU gives you. There's so much room for growth and development in any field that you wanna go in. You just have to go out and get it. And what would you say is what you're most looking forward to this year? I'm just looking forward to seeing everything unfold, like everybody's working hard, whether it's in my academics or athletics, and just seeing everybody work together is amazing. So to see the finished products for everything is what I'm looking forward to most. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, make sure to catch ISIS's posters on campus and or posts on Instagram or Twitter. Make sure to stop by the, the Diamond to catch her in the spring. Coming up next, we will have more information about sports and what's going on next week. Thank you to all of our underwriters. MSU Beavers Hockey. Online info at msubeavers.com. Forward Communication, connecting professionals in the Midwest. MSU Theater Department, year-round entertainment. Red and Green, MSU's student-run newspaper. MSU Bookstore, for all your campus needs. 
My Not Nutrition Addiction, offering healthy smoothies and meal replacements on the go. Spicy Pie, pizza, grinders, beer. Magic City Hoagies, locally owned sandwich shop located in Southwest Minot. Taco John's, offering fresh tacos, burritos, nachos, and breakfast. Thrive in Financial, connecting faith and finances. El Azteca, authentic Mexican food on North Broadway near the airport. PMQ Entertainment, performing at weddings, proms, and dances. The Pursuit, creating a place in Minot where everyone is welcome. Mouse River Players, community theater since 1971. H Bar B Construction, for all your oil field needs. Bears Cat Donuts, located on Broadway across from Minot State Campus. Welcome back. So with the semester winding down, football season is also ending and some players are not going to be coming back next season. Yeah, Saturday, if you haven't been out to a game, which I know you mentioned that before the show, <laughs> you might want to make it out to Saturday since it is going to be um, some of their last uh, games on Herb Parker Stadium's field. Saturday will be a bittersweet day for MSU football as the program will say farewell to its seniors. 11 student athletes will be playing their final collegiate game at Herb Parker Stadium against Bemidji State University. The players will be recognized alongside their families prior to kickoff on Saturday. And for more information on the celebration and streaming of the game, visit msubeavers.com for more. And also congratulations to the seniors on all of your achievements. Minot State women's basketball grabbed their first victory of the year in dominating fashion last night. Impressive defense followed by hot shooting allowed the Beavers to rout the Blue Hawks 84 to 43. MSU allowed Dickinson only 10 points in both the second and third quarters. Leading the Beavers on offense with an impressive first game of her senior campaign was Mariah Payne. Payne dropped 26 points in the win along with sophomore Anna Counts who scored 14. Junior guard Bethany Theodore led Minot State in assists with eight along with two steals. And the women's team will be on a short hiatus until they host Yellowstone Christian College on November 23rd. For the full schedule, visit msubeavers.com. Minot State men's basketball is now on a three-game win streak after defeating Dickinson State yesterday. The Beavers defeated the Blue Hawks 74-63 to boost their record to 3-0 on the year. And junior forward Cody Dwyer posted his first double-double on the year with 23 points and 11 rebounds. Senior Nibra White had his best performance so far this year with 16 points. And the Beavers also out-rebounded the Blue Hawks by a wide margin of 48-32. Minot State will look to continue their win streak on Saturday as they host Montana State Billings in the Dome. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. Minot State men's hockey has stayed hot on the ice as the Beavers extended their winning streak to six last weekend. The Beavers dominated number eight Utah 5-1 on Thursday and grabbed two more wins against UNLV Friday and Saturday. On Friday, the Beavers beat the 10th ranked Rebels 6-2. And leading MSU to victory was goalie Josh Bykowski, who had 30 stops on the night. On Saturday, it was a much closer contest as the Beavers snuck past the Rebels 3-2. And it was a late goal from Rhett Lowe that sealed the deal halfway through the third period. Once again, Bykowski was a wall at goalie, stopping 31 of 33 total shots. The Beavers will look for three more wins this weekend as they play host to Iowa State at the Mesa Arena and puck drop is 8 p.m. tomorrow night and is 7.30 p.m. on Saturday. So I know you, uh, Monica, have been familiar with Mesa Arena lately being the new PA announcer and I don't know if you've been out to any hockey games but they're pretty exciting yeah, to get I'm out. I'm planning on going on Friday. We were just talking about that during <laughs> one of the breaks for like... I need to make it out to one of the hockey games because they sound really exciting. They're very exciting. They're yeah. my favorite now, like actually being able to like watch them and have to pay attention like mm -hmm. more than normal. It's actually really interesting. Yeah, no, it's definitely a, a whole different type of thing because you're on ice instead of ground or a gym floor. So very true. 
Yeah. So this, there's been a lot of things happening on campus lately, various updates with the dome and things like that. Uh, make sure to catch us next week on the show because the following week we'll have Thanksgiving off. Thanks for watching and have a good night.